Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kelly Levine, The Closet Coach. I help professional organizers and designers and extremely talented DIYers design custom closets just like the pros. And today we're doing a fun project. So many people are thinking about transforming a bedroom into a closet. And I wanna point out some things today that you really need to think about. I'm using a past project that I've actually completed and installed. So I, you know, I've got the inventory, I've got the layout, I've got all of the real information. So it's not just a, a hypothetical um, transformation here. So this is a real transformation. So let's get started. Uh, here we go. If this is your first time here, I've got several videos on my uh, YouTube channel and on my Rumble channel that go through how to measure, how to um, do your inventory, um, some how to draw it and some basic design stuff. So if this gets too confusing, go back and watch those four videos and that will help you kind of understand um, how things are moving forward here. Okay. I can't go through that, unfortunately, every time. So we're just um, assuming that everybody's watched those at first three to four videos. And um, if not, go back and watch them after this, if you like what you see. All right. So these were my notes. So one of the things that I want to point out when you are when you're thinking about converting a bedroom to a closet, you walk into the room, especially if it's empty, and you've got all kinds of space, right? But normally you've got a few things going on. You've got, this is a window, an event. This is the closet in that room. Um, you know, you've got a door, of course. You've got, this is a vent on the wall, and you've got lots of outlets. All of those things you're going to want to note in your measurements, especially if you're doing a room, because a lot of closets don't actually have a lot of outlets and windows and different things like that in them. But most rooms have quite a bit of that. And you do need to consider that. And, and, and this is a really good example for showing you some of the things that I had to consider uh, when I did my layout. So, you know, again, we want to get floor vents, wall vents, whoops, here we go, uh, wall vents. These are all outlets. All of those are outlets. Um, and of course, the window and the closet are going to be big things. So, so the first thing that might be obvious to you, let's go to, um, actually, so when I, I've got these drawn out in, in elevation and plan view, so I'll be able to show you that a little bit better. But again, when you, the first time you're going through, don't try to make it perfect. As you can see, this is just a sketch. This is a lot more than five and a half inches. So this is just, you know, kind of my scribbling that I do as I'm going around and measuring. I'm not trying to, to measure it perfect um, from the very beginning. The next thing that I do is go through and do the inventory. And, you know, if I showed you my actual inventory sheet, you know, it's not that pretty in the beginning. I've got this great tool that you can use to help it keep it a little bit neater, but I've gone ahead and kind of filled this in. You can get this as a free download from a link in the bio, by the way. Okay, so what, what we're gonna note here is, uh, you know, our short hanging, our mid hanging, our long hanging, the number of stacks. And again, that's how many stacks of sweaters. Um, so she had about 30 stacks, which is um, quite a bit, quite a few um, stacks of sweaters. And they were actually like up in her reach in the reach in closet part of this, you know, stacked, you know, way, way high. So I actually think I counted her stacks. I think I counted one stack as three <laughs> because there's no way that, you know, she, she really, it, 
it, it took a lot to get even one sweater out of there. So I counted what I knew would be a true, you know, stack of three to four sweaters on a shelf that's going to make sense to keep things neat and, and tidy. So her stack, since they were a lot of sweaters and things like that, they were about 12 to, some of them were a little bit wider, 12 to 14 inches wide. So I just made note of that as well. Um, she didn't really have a lot of miscellaneous shelf space stuff in there because it was really just at that point, it was an empty room with a dresser in it. She had some things on top of the dresser and I did make note of that. And I may, I, uh, you know, gave her space for that, but I knew that if I put drawers in, I always leave a landing above. So that kind of took care of itself, but you can get really specific with this. Um, she didn't have them in this space, but I knew she also had some purses and things that she would have liked to have gotten on shelves too. So I knew from the beginning that this 30 is what she had in there. I also knew that I was going to try to give her more than 30 spaces for folded clothes and uh, purses, things like that. Then when it came to shoes, again, some of them were in there. Not all. She told me, you know, I, I probably counted, I don't know, 70, something like that. She told me to figure 100. Most of what I saw was a seven and a half inch type of a heel or a shoe that would fit in a seven and a half inch space. Um, and then some tall boots. So this is where you have to start talking about priorities, because when you're looking at 100 pair of shoes, that takes up a lot of shelf space if you're going to make it all perfect. So I'll show you guys what I did. So this is the inventory that I had. And here is the room drawn out correctly. All right. And for our purposes, since I didn't want to make you guys wait and, you know, watch me draw out all of this stuff. I've already drawn out the... Uh, the elevations here as far as just the shape of them so you don't have to um, wait for all of that but you know and there was also a closet here and I've got that on this page already all drawn out all right so when we're starting out looking at this inventory she had 145 inches of short hanging and 98 inches of mid hanging now I know from doing a lot of closets that when you've got mid hanging, you can get some really nice shelving above it. In other words, mid hanging being a rod at right around 51 inches. And then you typically get three to four shelves above that. So you've got a lot of really nice shelving. She also had 145 inches of short hanging. And when you are working with a room like this, and especially when you've got, you know, remember, you're going to be walking in the room like this. It would be logical to think, you know, if she wanted a double set of drawers, that maybe those would be really nice right here. But as you look around the room, you don't have anything here that you can do for hanging except for there. If you had a double dresser here, you'd have some hanging here. But if you tried to put hanging here, it's going to be hanging, you know, right out into the doorway. So you really have to think this through. The closet is a great place to put hanging because, you know, it's, it's generally it's made for that. And you can really get a lot in there if you set it up with, you know, that in mind to keep your wall space in your bedroom open. You can see, you know, we don't, we have barely any here. We've got, you know, barely any here. And we also have to keep in mind the door that's opening on this closet. Because if, you know, if it was back any further, I wouldn't have even been able to use this space because it would have banged into the, the shelving when the door was open. I, we really got lucky in that there was really just enough space to get a 12 inch deep shelf here and still have the door open nicely because there was five and a half inches of wall on the outside, but there was also some wall on the inside, you know, and so the door didn't actually open 
all of this way. Um, it kind of went went to here. So got lucky there, but you do need to keep that in mind because if your door opens that way, it is really cumbersome to have a closet door that doesn't open all the way. I, I don't recommend blocking things like that uh, because it's just going to seem icky. It's going to you know, bang into stuff, just not a good idea. So you've got to keep that in mind. Um, you also have vents and you've got a very large window here. So there is some space under here, but we've got to keep, you know, these things in mind as well. And then we had an upper vent, which I don't see a lot of, but you know, you've got to keep that in mind too. If you've got an upper vent, you don't want to be, in most cases, you don't want to be trying to cover that unless you absolutely have to. Then we got a couple outlets here as well. And then the way this door opens, you know, this door opens, we're going to put something here. Number one, you've got to make sure that you're okay with your door not opening all the way because, you know, your, I always say your door needs to open at least 90 degrees to the opening and hopefully farther than that. But sometimes if you are desperate for space, it's okay for it not to open 100% if you want to try to get a cabinet in here. But you do need to think about that because you definitely don't want to have a cabinet that makes your door have to be like that. All right, so as I was thinking this out, the first thing that I noticed was that it was 145 inches of short and the closet was 74 and a half inches. So take that, double that, and you basically are at 145 inches. So the first thing that I did was I decided um, to put that, all that hanging, all that double hanging in the closet, made it a super simple two sections in there um, and got all her double hanging in there. Another thing, you know, to note about this client is that she did have a lot of shoes and a lot of dresses. Typically, someone that's got a lot of shoes and a lot of dresses, those are their prettier clothes. And, you know, the double hanging and stuff is kind of utility stuff that they don't really care if they see. So, you know, keeping the dresses and the shoes and the, all the shelving so that she had really good access to her sweaters was a good idea in this, in this case. So since I knew she wanted, she actually wanted, uh, it was either eight or 10 drawers. Uh, yeah, we did 10 drawers. So I knew that I wasn't going to take up this whole back wall like I normally would because it was not going to, you know, I, I did not want to put hanging there. And what would have been left in that wall would not have been anywhere close to her 98 inches of um, dresses that she needed, her 98 inches of mid hanging, okay? So one of the first things that I did was I decided to put drawers on this wall. Um, I knew they wouldn't hang out too far and I could keep them somewhat away from the door, but yet stay on this side of this vent. And I'm gonna scooch that down as far as I can so that when you come in, those drawers are not going to be in front of the, drawer, the door at all. And they weren't, I did quite a bit of measuring to make sure that there wasn't going to be anything in, in that, in the way of that door opening. So we've got some 16 inch deep drawers here. And those are 24 inches wide. Um, then, you know, since I know from experience that it's best to have hanging clothes go to the corners and keep drawers and other decorative things more in the center. I next looked at this really, really nice wall here because I knew that was where I was going to get that 90 inch, 98 inches of hanging. And so I just started breaking that up. And, you know, I got, you know, this worked out perfectly because I was able to get 
you can see that that vent was 14 and three quarters, whoops, 14 and three quarter inches from the wall to the start of it. That's what, that's what this dimension is telling me that it was 14 and three quarter inches from there to there. So I knew that I could get a 14 inch panel in there. So that's what I started out with. Then I gave her a 36 inch wide section so that she could get three stacks of 12 on those um, shelves. So, and then our next thing is gonna be drawers. So I'm drawing that, that panel a little bit deeper, um, but depending on the system, um, that was a 36 inch wide section of drawer of dresses. And then the next thing was her drawers and I wanted to get those in next. So I put those oops, put those next didn't interfere at all with her um, her light switches, which worked out perfectly. And then we got two more sections. One more section of 36 inch. I've got this scooched over just a tad. And, and then this, so this ended up to be a 36 inch section again. And this ended up to be, I think 36 and a quarter. Okay, so, so far in our elevation views, and I did go to the ceiling again because she needed, she wanted to, you know, have it be pretty. And she also wanted to get as much, um, I knew I had a lot of folded clothes that I needed to take into consideration. So we've got our side panels. And you can see here how I'm, you know, not, I'm making sure in the design that I'm not crossing over directly in front of any of these outlets or any of the, you know, other things. If you have that happen, if it's going to happen um, and you decide you're going to live with that, you need to make very large notches in the back of your panels so that you can still use that plug. You're not going to want to just, you know, put a panel in front of a plug. It's just a bad, bad, bad idea. All right, so I hate that I have to pause. Okay, so on these three mid-hanging sections, the rod at 51 inches is a, you know, a pretty typical height for dresses and it was for her as well. Oops, that's not that section. So I did all three of these, you know, identical. Nope. Come on, what is going on here? There we go. All right, and then and then we're just going to put in the the shelves. Remember the spacing of our shelves for um, So 
sorry, I get into this drawing and I kind of get mesmerized. Um, the spacing of our shelves for folded clothes is, you know, approximately uh, 10 inches of space. Don't, don't try to make your shelves, you know, 12 inches apart, you're going to get a mess. Okay, so we've got our shelves there. I think this ended up to be 36 and a quarter, but if we do that math, we've got 134 and a half inches. We've got one, two, three, four, five panels. So that's five times 0.75 in most cases, three quarter inch wide material is gonna be three and three quarters. So we've got 134 and a half minus three and three quarters. We've got 130 inches and three quarters, minus 36, minus 24, minus 36, equals 34 and three quarters. Oh, guess I did not do that math right. Oops. So your, your end, um, and this is if you're going wall to wall, uh, which, you know, I suggest you can, you know, if you're using, if you're using um, pre-made materials, if you're buying it from a, a box store, you may need to adjust these a little bit. I think some of them might come 36 inch wide. Some of them may only come up to 30 inches wide. So in that case, you're going to have to adjust and, you know, it's totally fine. You're just going to have to move things a little bit, but make sure you know the system that you're using, what its capabilities are. All right, so then we've got our drawers. And we did five drawers. Oops. Come on. All right, so we've got five drawers. And then I mentioned before that um, I knew that she wanted a landing. So again, um, a landing is really just a bigger space. So I left a little bit bigger space above her um, above her drawers so that she could put jewelry and, you know, whatever else there. And, you know, the nice thing with these systems, especially if it's a custom closet system, is that these are adjustable. So you can, you know, adjust those as you like. 18 inches is quite a bit. Um, some people only want 14 or 16 for that landing, which gives you a little bit more adjustability in your shelving. Okay, and so we've got this main wall done. We've got uh, 36 times three, we've got 108 inches of short hanging. So, you know, we've, we've got that taken care of there. We've got you know, 144 inches of, sorry, that 108 was mid, the 144 was short, you know, and if I'm an inch or two or even 10, I know that when I've measured and done my inventory, and I want to suggest this for you too, just measure gener gen generously, measure gen gener generously, because that way you don't have to worry if you're an inch or two short or, you know, whatever you're going to know that you've got plenty. So uh, we've got the hanging taken care of. We've got five of the drawer. Actually, we've got 10 of the drawers taken care of. Um, this is, so this is what this would look like from the other side. We've got that panel coming down just on the other side. Again, that's our, our panel here. That's this this panel right here that's hanging, you know, that's going right there. 
And then we're going to put those drawers in. And so we're going to just scooch those drawers right on the other side of that, of that vent so that we can keep them away from the door as much as, you know, as much as we can. So you can get in before you have to, um, you know, so you're not getting hit by anything. All right, so on this one, there is an outlet behind that. So the thing that um, we do in that case is we, because we were a custom shop, we cut those drawers a, just a little bit less. If a client doesn't want to use that outlet, you know, we just cut them a little less. If they want to use it, then we'd cut them back a little bit more and then, you know, notch above so that a cord could come up and rest on the landing. And I'm just going to take and copy all of this. Should be close to the same size. All right, so you can see that you're going to need to um, do some do some things so that you can use that. The other thing that you could do is you could just notch it in the side and you know make this one drawer box a little bit shorter. But you do have to keep that stuff in mind. And my guess is that when you buy um, when you buy drawer boxes from a box store, they're not going to go and actually touch the drawer. So you'll get enough space, you know, to have a little bit of space there. But you know, definitely keep that stuff in mind. Over here, there's no problem. If you wanted to, you could put a little notch here so you could run a cord that way. But these are some of the things to keep in mind. So let's put our hangers in here. Okay, so now we've got a deal. And we need our shelves above as well. So again, guys, this all comes down to priorities and inventory. This is definitely probably not the layout that somebody else might, might need. So here's what I did for the shoes. She was okay with having a, um, a, a section behind the door. So I did a 12 inch deep section and I went on the outside of that outlet. And then I, I had done some measuring. So I used a 21 inch section so that it didn't impede her door. And for shoes, you only need 12 inch deep wide material anyway. Um, so I did that there. And then we've got this window wall and the closet door as well. And let's uh, draw this over here. So we had, this is our other panel coming down. This on this side. And, you know, keep this in mind as well. There was 20 and a quarter inches to the trim trim is typically at least three inches. So that means there's probably about 23 or 24 inches. So I knew that when her, you know, dresses came down, they were not going to hang in front of the window. But if you've got less than that, they might. So if you're putting double hanging and, you know, you've got not very much space, you could end up with clothes hanging in front of a window. In this case, we've got, you know, shelves up here. So it's not, it's not gonna be a problem at all, but I kind of got lucky there with, you know, the wall on this side was just enough to get a panel in. The wall here was just enough so that clothes weren't gonna be hanging in front of the window, but keep those things in mind. All right, so now for the shoes. Like I said, I had already determined that I could get 
a small section in here, but it's only 19 and a half inches. And um, the way that I was setting up these shoe shelves, you know, was, I'll show you this one, is with a base so that her shoes weren't on the floor. Now, some people are fine with them being on the floor, but we decided that she wanted this all enclosed. So in order to do that, in order to get a base here, you've got to put you've got to put a filler here. And I would have had to put a filler here anyway, um, but we've got, you know, a filler, we've got a panel coming out. And remember, there was only five and a half inches of wall there. So you've got to get that away from the baseboard, away from the trim, which it was, and then you've got to have a full panel. So I've got a 16 inch wide section here. So uh, I think it comes right about to there. And that's 16 inches will fit two pairs of shoes side by side, even if they're like, um, you know, like booties or a pair of tennis shoes or something like that. Typically for a woman, 16 inches will get you there. So that's what we've got here. We had, oops. Then we had a filler piece. I've shown the closet door here. And then we had another full panel to give us our 16 inches. And then tall boots, I usually leave about 18 inches. And then we've got a whole bunch of shelves at seven and a half. Because again, I, you know, looking at her shoes, some of them are going to be more, some are going to be less. Um, this was an average of what she could fit. So as she loads those up, you know, she'll adjust those shelves accordingly. If you, if you are a professional organizer, you will be able to just set this up perfectly from the very beginning for your client and it'll be all beautiful and wonderful. <clears throat> all right. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Twenty-two pairs of shoes there. Let me see if that's what I had before, or if I put in more, yep. Okay, and then we've got underneath the window. So we've got a vent there and, you know, we've got some space, but we've also got these two outlets and we only have 20 inches here. And remember that I said, you know, for clothes to hang out, I really like to leave at least 24 inches. So I know that I'm going to take 24 inches off of that wall. I'm going to take, but the other thing, you know, is let's see what we end up with here. So we've got a 97 inch wall. We wanna take 20, at least 24 inches off of this side so that those clothes aren't gonna be hitting and then we've got three panels here plus 16 inches. So we've got 18 and a quarter inches there. So we've got 54 and three quarter inches. So I know that for the other thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to have a panel going over this vent. So I'll just tell you, if you're a person that everything has to be symmetrical, 
you're going to be in trouble here because in order to be symmetrical, these shoe shelves, there would have been a panel going over the vent. I do not recommend that. Please get over this everything has to be symmetrical thing when it comes to functionality. The other thing that would have happened if I would have done that is that the dimension of these would have been off for shoes. In other words, you would have tried to put your shoes in there and they wouldn't have necessarily fit that nicely. So, um, and you know, when you've got this shelving set up properly and you've got shoe, 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 you don't notice that it's not exactly the same on both sides because the shoes are what you're looking at and they're all evenly spaced and fitting nicely instead of being jammed in there just to make the structure. Um, again, if you're going to put a panel over a vent, you're going to have to do some huge notching and it is just really not a good idea because you at some point are going to want to get that vent cover off. All right, so what I did, um, and we're going to have three panels. We're going to have, you know, a panel here. We're going to have a panel somewhere here, and we're going to have a panel here. So we're going to take another two and a quarter. So we've got 52 and a half potential inches. And so I said, the first thing I said is, well, I'd like to get 16 inches over here if I can. So that left me with 36 and a half. I must have decided to stay away 27 inches because these are the actual dimensions that I used. So that would make it one, two, three, four. That would put, oh, and maybe, and it might have been because I didn't want to hit this outlet either. So what I ended up doing was 34 inches here. Yeah, that's what I did. I wanted to stay in between these. So I went 34 inches and then I went another 16 inches to keep that corner so that the person wasn't knocking their knee on the top of this panel. And then, you know, I put that in. And I can't remember exactly how high I went. I usually go within a couple inches. So, and I always put a top piece on to make that look nice. And then if you're going to do a base, what you're going to do is you're going to cut the vent out of this base and put the cover on top so that the air can still go straight up. And that, you know, it looks like I have that up, but it doesn't, it doesn't need to be. It's, it's actually really close to the floor. Some, some custom co closet companies give you like a three inch base. That's because they're trying to get above your baseboard. Um, again, if you're doing this yourself, you may want to just leave this base off. We're going to get a couple of shelves in here. You can do shelves, you know, over the outlets because you can just notch. If it becomes a problem, you can just notch that shelf out a little bit. And those shelves are adjustable. So sometimes you can just totally, you know, miss that outlet and it's not a big deal. So we've got 34 inches, which is, you know, at least four pairs across. If it's dress shoes, it might even be five pairs across. Um, I think I counted this as four. So let's just say um, this is another 12 pairs. This is another nine pairs. So we've got 20, oops. 22 plus 12 plus nine is 43 pair right there. And then we've got this wall right here where we can get some more. So that was the one that I drew out. I did a 12 inch um, piece, like I said, I, whoops. I went just to the other side of that outlet And then I went over and did a 21 inch section. 
And again, I did double check that the door was going to be able to open. And this one, I don't believe, oh, maybe we did. Yeah, we probably did do a base here as well. You know, sometimes when I watch these videos, I watch my, I watch my own video back. And since I'm doing some of this drawing and talking and, you know, blah, 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 it gets a little slow sometimes. So sometimes when I'm watching it back, I'll watch it on like 1.25 or 1.5. So just a tip, if you think that I talk too slow or it takes too long on these drawings, um, you can get pretty much uh, a pretty good um, beat if you turn it up to 1.25 or 1.5. All right, so we've got another uh, 21 inches is gonna be three pairs, because uh, again, she had a lot of dress shoes. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, 33 pairs here. So I've got 76 pairs. Um, now, when I did it, I, mu I must have spaced these a little bit different. I came up with 80, but that is not 100. So, you know, it was time to think about priorities. She does have the entire closet. The other thing that she's got is tons of shelf space. So let's um, put this here. So we've got 76. The shelf space, these are three each. So we've got um, uh, nine times three is 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. We've got 39 spaces there. Oh, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think I drew these out too. These are actually drawn. As I'm telling you not to do 12 inches, I'm drawing them as 12 inches. So this is actually four shelves, um, which sometimes on these drawings looks, you know, crowded, but it, it in reality, it is not. You really want... Um, this is the correct spacing of the shelves. There we go. Okay, so we have 12 times three is 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48 spaces, okay? So we are well over what I know she needs for sweaters. So that is a, is a place where she can definitely make up more space for shoes. Um, I've also left only room for six pair of tall boots, but let's talk about that closet. Because, you know, inside that closet, she's got this double hanging. She could easily put, you know, some pairs of boots in there um, or use this top shelf for some boxes of boots. In Minnesota, typically boots are seasonal, so we're, we're not wearing them that much in the summer. So she could put some of those, store those away in the top here in the wind, you know, in the summer, and then bring those out, readjust a couple shelves and put some of her summer shoes in here and, and still have plenty of room for shoes because really she wanted to make sure that all of her hanging was in here. So that was a priority and the shoes, it was kind of a bonus that we were able to get all of this in. Okay. So this is what I did for her. Um, it, worked out you know beautifully she's walking in i'll show you some of the the 3ds so um 
this is from the far wall looking toward that window. So you can see that, you know, when there's clothes hanging in here, they're going to fill up this space. All right, and actually I got, I had another shoe shelf in there too. So I must have figured this for some of our flatter shoes. But you get the idea that you can add or sub subtract shelves um, depending on how close you can go to that window. You can really uh, maximize the space by using, you know, more shelves if you can. And then I've got all of this nice shelving. It's a little bit more apparent in the 3Ds that this is the correct spacing for shelving that you can get four spaces there. And then, you know, really nice areas for all her dresses to be visible as she's walking in. This is what you're gonna see. Uh, these are some lines I can't get rid of, but you can see that her outlets are here, access, still accessible and usable. And then we've got the look from the back wall toward the closet. Here's all of that double hanging inside the closet out of sight. So, um, and then we've got the other shoe shelf there and the set of drawers here. And there's that vent that we, that we were missing. And there's the inside of the closet again. So turned out to be a really nice project. I was able to get in there everything that she was hoping for. But you can see this takes a lot of planning. You don't just start looking at this and, and think that you can get all of this hanging. You know, most people would think, oh, the closet part isn't really that, it, it, you know, it's not that big of a deal. We can just leave that. That ended up in this design to be one of the most important parts because I was able to get all of that hanging in there, which allowed me to get her pretty hanging out here, still have room for drawers and boatloads of shoes. Now, if you had somebody that had a lot of shoes but didn't want to see them, then we'd have to do this all, you know, totally differently. Um, I still, you know, putting the hanging in the closet is, is um, typically in a bedroom is a good way to do it because again, you, you end up not really having as much wall space as you might think. You've only really got a couple of walls, you know, in any closet because you've always got like your closet coming out, typically a window, lots of outlets and things like that. So hope this helps you uh, get some perspective on the things that you're going to need to consider if you're thinking about converting a bedroom into a closet, but it's a great project. If this all is way too overwhelming, there's a link below where I can get this done for you. If you have questions about how to learn how to do this and really think it through, there's also a link for that below. And as I mentioned, you can get the free inventory worksheet and the instructions on how to measure that from uh, another link in the bio. Hope you guys all have a great week. Thanks for joining me today and we will see you again next time. As always, if you have things that you're struggling with, put some comments, I'd love to hear. And if you are working on a project and you're stumped, let me know and I can do a video hopefully to help you out. Take care and have a great day, bye-bye.